Can you build muscle when you don't have hours to spend in the gym? The answer is yes. And in this video, I have four ways to show you that will help you out. Hi, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy. I've been exercising since I was about 16 years old in a range of different training styles. I really care about health and fitness and I really enjoy doing it. But now I have two kids. I need to be more efficient with my time. All of the ideas covered in this video are based on the concept of progressive overload, but in a non-conventional way. If you want a quick overview of how muscle building and progressive overload works, then you're in luck, because I've made a video about that already. So let's get into it. For progressive overload, we're looking for the maximum number of Goldilocks reps. That's reps that are within one or two of failure. These have been shown in many studies to be the critical point for driving hypertrophy, which is muscle building. For each exercise, I'm going to show you a comparison with a conventional set and rep range. So I'm using four sets of eight reps with a one minute rest. And I'm also going to try and track the Goldilocks reps on the screen as we go. Myo sets! Okay, so the basic idea with this one is that you do an activation set, which is something that you push almost all the way to failure, and then you wait 15 seconds, and then you do another three up to five reps, and then you wait another 15 seconds, another three reps, another 15 seconds, another three reps, and so on for as many sets as you want. Why does it work? It reduces the amount of rest time, so it keeps your muscles in a state of fatigue, which means that you can add more beneficial reps or Goldilocks reps to the end of each exercise without having to do all of the build-up first. It means that you get the same amount done in less time, or you get more reps in the same amount of time. Time for some maths. Now the maths isn't gonna be complicated, so stick with me and I'll stick it on the screen as well. Let's shift me up here a minute. If we have a look at our example sets and reps range, that's four sets of eight reps. It took me about 20 seconds to do the first eight reps. So that's four lots of 20 seconds, which is 80 seconds total. And then we need three rest breaks in between those, each 60 seconds, which is 180 seconds total, or three minutes, which means that the total amount of time to do four sets and eight reps is four minutes and 20 seconds. And this would give you a benefit of about eight Goldilocks reps. The second way that we can look at it is if we compare it to what I'm actually doing on the screen, which is a total of 12 Goldilocks reps. In order to achieve that, you would need to do six sets of eight reps. Now I'm just gonna speed up the last bit of this video so we can do a comparison. So what we can see is if we want to achieve the same result, it takes us seven minutes doing a standard set and reps range, but it only takes us three minutes and 37 seconds if we were doing my own sets. And even if we just do our four by eight, what we actually find is that it still takes us longer than the six sets that we did using the my sets technique. Okay, on to the next one. Drop sets. Okay, so this one works on the same premise as the last one, that we're going to reduce the amount of time we have for our body to recover from fatigue. So first we're going to pick a weight that's difficult for about 6 to 8 reps, push all the way to failure with those, and then without any rest time we're going to reduce the weight, crank out as many as we can again to failure, and so on. We keep reducing the weight and then going all the way to failure, and then reducing the weight and going all the way to failure. Why do they work? There's no rest breaks, which shortens the amount of time for the exercise, but gives you the same benefits because we're still getting lots of Goldilocks reps in. The difficulty that you'll sometimes find doing drop sets is that it takes a while to change the weights on a dumbbell. Or in a commercial gym, you might find it hard to find the next weight down because someone's using it, or you end up having lots of weights all over the floor and no one else can use them and then everyone gets really grumpy with you. I've really started using drop sets more since I got these adjustable dumbbells. They really are a game changer when it comes to being able to change the weight quickly and then carry on with the exercise with almost no friction. They are pretty expensive, but they're definitely worth it if this is the kind of thing that you want to be doing regularly. And there's an affiliate link in my description below if you wanted to buy some. On to the maths bit. Let's shift me out of the way again. 
Same premise, four sets, eight reps. This time, eight reps took me about 30 seconds. So for four sets, that would be about two minutes total. And then three rest breaks, each of about one minute, which takes our total up to five minutes. And that, again, would give you a benefit of about eight Goldilocks reps. Same as before, we're gonna compare it to what I actually did in this video. So in this video, I ended up doing five sets, which was 10 Goldilocks reps. And so this time, the maths works out as 30 seconds per set, which is two minutes 30 for actual working time, then four one minute rest breaks, which is four minutes, which takes our total to 6 minutes 30. Let's just speed me up a bit to get to the comparison. And so, as we can see, the drop sets took me 4 minutes and 7 seconds to complete, whereas the same amount of work would have taken 6 minutes and 30. And again, even if we'd just done our standard rep range, uh, we'd have still taken longer at 5 minutes than we did for doing these drop sets. Next, supersets! I'm actually going to speed up this video now, because supersets do take a lot longer than all of the others so far. Right, so this is probably the one that you're most familiar with. This is the idea of doing more than one exercise in the same block before you take a rest. Do enough exercises in the same block and you call it a circuit, but it's all based on the same premise. What we're doing here is we're reducing the rest time by only resting once in between multiple exercises, rather than resting after each set of each exercise. Now lots of people do these wrong. The key to making supersets work is to make sure that each of the exercises that you put into a block is exercising a different muscle group. So in the example here, I'm doing chest press and I'm also doing rows. I normally add a maximum of about four exercises into this. So I might do dips, pull-ups, face pulls, and hanging leg raises, for example. Why do they work? As I said before, by putting multiple exercises together, you cut down on the amount of rest time, the difficulty in a home gym is making sure that you have enough space to switch around without conflicting with yourself. So you have to plan your exercises quite carefully. And the issue with this in a commercial gym is that sometimes you can't get to multiple areas at the same time. So if you can, what I do is superset with the same equipment, which means that you're not hogging lots of equipment, but you can do multiple exercises at the same time. Another example might be if you were doing squats and then you could use the squat rack to do pull-ups in between your sets. Okay, time for the maths bit again. Get out of the way, me. I did the same maths as I did for the last two, but it got really messy because it took me 48 seconds to do the chest press. It took me 43 seconds to do the rows. So overall, the chest section took 6 minutes and 12, and the rows took 5 minutes 52. And then I realised that actually there's a much quicker way of working this out. We do two lots of exercises. Each one would have had three minutes of rest, but we got rid of the rest out of one of those exercises. So actually the saving is three minutes. And if we look at all the maths, it comes pretty close. Come on, come on, hurry up. Sometimes I wish I could actually speed up my exercise so it was this quick. 12 minutes and four versus nine minutes, 24 if you're doing the supersets. And obviously, the more exercises you do within a superset, the more benefit you're gonna get, the more time you're gonna save. So if you did four exercises as part of your superset, then you've got three lots of three minute rest that you're getting rid of. So you save nine minutes. Next one, rest, pause. This is really similar to drop sets, except you don't change the weight. So you basically push to failure, wait for 15 seconds, push to failure again, wait for 15 seconds, and repeat until you've had enough. There is a slightly different way of doing this where you set a goal as a number of total reps to achieve and you just keep working until you get there. I use both systems depending on the exercise and how I'm feeling on that day. Why it works. So with this, myo and drop sets, all of them are using this idea of reducing your rest time and keeping your body in a constant state of fatigue, which means you can get to those Goldilocks reps a lot quicker. Right, shift me out the way and time for the fun math section. Okay, back to our idea of four sets, eight reps. 
This time, eight reps on a tricep pushdown only takes me 15 seconds. So that's a minute for all of your exercise, and then three one minute rests in between, which takes your total to four minutes and gives you a total of eight Goldilocks reps. But as you'll see as we go through this video, I actually ended up doing nine sets on this. If we do the maths for a normal nine sets, that's eight reps, which takes 15 seconds, which is two minutes and 15 seconds total, but then eight minutes of rest time, taking the total up to 10 minutes and 15 seconds. So let's speed it up and get into the comparison. So you can see with this rest pause, it only took four minutes and 18 seconds to complete all nine sets, which means on one exercise alone, we're saving eight minutes of time. That's definitely something I need. Oh, and absolutely don't forget about legs. I know it looks from these videos like I'm never doing legs, but actually I find that squatting or deadlifting is more of a full body exercise. So I do like to keep a bit more of a rest in the middle of that and make sure that too much fatigue isn't impacting my form. I find that fatigue within a full body exercise can really compromise your form and have risk of injury, which it doesn't so much in isolation exercises. There's also some extra bonuses doing these stars. They're more intense and so they burn more calories and they keep your heart rate higher for longer. You can split your workouts throughout the day if you've got a home gym or you're doing body weight exercises and it's easier because every exercise only takes five minutes rather than about 20 so you can fit more into smaller portions of your day. You also get the benefit of being fully rested the next time you do an exercise, which means that you can put more intensity and more focus into that exercise rather than being fatigued from the exercise before. And also, you can train each muscle group as soon as it's recovered. You don't have to wait until the next time the chest day comes around. Hope you found this content useful. Thanks for watching.